Welcome listeners to the gathering place of two big bald buddies who dare to delve into the horrors of the unknown. This is the horror basement and beyond, where Johnny and his co-conspirator in all things mysterious, the one and only Jim Jam. They take you on a hair-raising journey through the realms of horrors, where shadows whisper secrets, cryptids lurk in the shadows, and extraterrestrial beings may just be watching. But fear not, because the only truly frightening thing in our basement is our passion for the unexplained. We're not just your average podcast. We're the big bald buddies who bring you a spine-tingling blend of horror, mysterious phenomena, cryptids, aliens, and even a dash of culinary curiosity. Yes, you heard that right. We'll explore the eerie and satiate your appetite for the strange and unusual, while keeping it as funny as we can. So buckle up as we venture into the depths of the horror basement and beyond, where nightmares come to life, mysteries unfold, and two big bald buddies guide you through the unknown with a blend of terror, humor, and a hunger for the unexplained. It's time to face your fears and join us in the darkness, because down here every creak, every rustle, and every story has a sinister tale to tell. Welcome to the horror basement and beyond. Welcome to the horror basement and beyond with the big bald buddies, Jim Jam and John. I'm one of your hosts, Johnny, and as always, Jim Jam is here with us. Jim Jam here. What is up for everyone? Hope you're having a great week. I hope you're staying cool. If you're in the South, it's friggin' hot. Yes, friggin'. Right so hot, it's friggin' hot. It's friggin' hot. Friggin'. Uh, we got some horror news, of course. We got some uh, aliens, stop talk, uh, some ghost stuff, videos. You know how we do it. You know how we do Um I haven't been doing much lately. Uh, went to the Juneteenth celebration in McMinnville. It was so hot. I went there, got some food, and I left. Uh, so, yeah. Had some good chicken wings. Had a good quesadilla. Supported some friends. And, yeah. I wish I'd have brought that strawberry cake I got up there. It's like a little bitty one. And it was like a strawberry cake with cream cheese icing on it. It looked really good. Personal one. Yeah. Of. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little, little metal tin. Like, this big, yeah. But uh, it's refrigerating at home. I'm going to eat it when I get home. We do. Um, but not much going on. We're going to Myrtle Beach next week. Next Sunday. Yes. Uh, so not 100 percent sure about podcasts. I might just record it on my phone. Yeah. Uh, or we'll do a little. Or if we do it the Saturday week. before, maybe. Which is this Saturday. Yeah. Oh no! Saturday before I got you. Yeah, yeah. The next Saturday, uh, maybe, but uploading we'll it would be the other thing. I'll upload it at night. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, get it's you so ready. Look, y'all. Hold on. I already got sailor, my sailor, sailor shirt on. Sailor button up shirt on. Uh, well, I'm prepping, y'all. I'm ready. Yeah, uh, it's going to be fun. Me and Johnny going to be playing in the ocean. Yeah, we've never been. So, well, I mean, we've been to the ocean, we've never been to uh, the Atlantic. No, um, and never been to the ocean together. No, and Myrtle Beach, never been to Myrtle Beach, so it's gonna be we're gonna have a fun time. Hopefully, we don't see the big bald buddies get ate up by some shark. I, oh, I seen a video today where it said exactly. where it claimed that there was a shark at Myrtle Beach. I don't know if it was true. Yeah, like this girl was like a one one minute twenty second video, and it's like to the posted today. It's like fifteen minutes after she posted it, and you just seen something like kick up water, but you never really seen anything. It's a good ways out there, too. She couldn't zoom in too well with her phone. so Probably had a shitty iPhone. I don't know, but it really don't matter to me. Because, I, I mean, I'm going to get in the water, but I'm not going to get in the water. You need to go over your head? I don't know. I'm not going to walk out that far. No, no, no. I don't want you know to know what I'm saying? dive I, under a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll do that. Like, you know, but I'm not going to. Because I have contacts in, and the last thing I want to do is go blind out there. So I would recommend uh if you get in the water uh to uh bring your cheap sunglasses in while you're in the water. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to lose the good ones. Oh no, no. I already thought about that. I'm going to bring some uh Yeah, I'm going to get my old black ones I used to wear. Those I think are... I I think I have ones with the uh, if I can find the strap, I know... put a strap on it like some Panama Jacks that might float. I might, I might buy some of them and put them on my That'd be cool, like, when we're, we're eating or something, you know, we can just hang them around our necks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. I might see if I can find a pack of them. Yeah. yeah I'll have them. Which, I mean, I got way too many pairs of sunglasses now. And I got, 
around 10 pair I've bought in the last year since I've been able to, since I started wearing contacts. A little over a year. Yeah. I've got like 10 pairs of sunglasses. But I had to make up for the decade of not wearing contacts. And yeah, uh, you, I have got to shave my eyes. Yeah, you recently, just with me knowing you, have started uh, wearing contacts. Yeah, I, just over a year ago. Because I've never been able to find a pair that would that were comfortable enough. Because I tried to do it a few years back. And they strained my eyes so bad. But these right here, they're... They're like the one a day. Which I don't wear them every day, so a three month supply will last me most mm-hmm. of the year. A year supply or a month supply lasts me a year. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm not paying a hundred dollars every three months. I take them out and Oh yeah, them. you can. Yeah. Once you do that, why are they daily? What the fuck is they're technically it's just they give you daily ones so that uh it's more sanitary. And I had a problem with eye infections anyways when I wore contacts because I, I kept them for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, you have more, you're more prone to get eye infections that way. So, yeah, that's just what it is. Um, contacts are expensive, so. Yeah, they're like $200 for three months supply. I just bought a month box and that was over 100 bucks. And these right here are like some sort of, they're like they're not even in there. Like oh, yeah, I can't tell no more. And I have astigmatism in both eyes. So. Now, if I was to get water in my eyes, I can feel them kind oh, yeah, of pull yeah. up a little bit. But Yeah, I got astigmatism in both eyes, so they're even. It's definitely something I won't forget. I, of course, bring my backpack, and I keep my extra pair of contacts in there and my glasses. Yeah. I might bring more than two, uh, a pair of contacts. Oh, I'm, bringing, <laughs> I'm bringing quite a few pair. At least five pair. We're going to be there four or five days, but I'm going to bring... Well, we quite a few because uh, it hit that water and yeah, they might fly out. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want that to happen. So that's what we're doing next week. Uh, I haven't had really much else going on. Jim Jam's got him a new job coming up. Uh, so yep, Tuesday through Saturday my schedule will be. So I don't know. Uh, Saturday nights we can do stuff, and then I won't be working Mondays. No, so yeah, Sunday and Monday will be my days off. But uh, we can always do stuff on Sundays. But anyways, uh, yeah, back with Pepsi. Going to be a, a merchandiser for Dollar General. That'll be interesting. Hell yeah. Hopefully uh, I'll be in time just for them new flavors. Come three new flavors. They're already out, so. Oh, I just ain't one. We went to I seen one at a Safeway. Or not Safeway, Speedway. Why didn't you get it? I don't want to pay the money for it. I already know it's trash. Well, I'll get it. I don't know. I just... It was last week. Was it, you sure it was new or was it a Baja one? It was a Baja one. Oh, no. We've already done all the new Baja. Oh, no, we have. Yeah, we have. Oh. There was only two new Baja. No, it was a different one. That ain't Baja, then. That's just like the... There was Liberty, a new flavor. The Liberty something. No, it wasn't on them. It, was, it looked new. I thought Baja was coming out with some new summer flavors. They already do. No, different ones. No, those only, only come out with two last I saw. I don't know. Anyways. The other so. ones are Liberty ones like for 4th of July shit. Yeah. Uh, which they gotta be better. They're just Bomb Pop flavor. But the one peach and lemon one just... Bomb Pops don't taste like peach and lemon, man. You know, there's so no peach lemonade in a bomb. Peach and lemon? Well, the, the one white one's a peach lemonade. Uh... Because it has it on there. It has the flavor. Yeah, a peach lemonade does not sound... I had... Speaking of, I went to the farmer's market this morning. I had some of the best fucking lemonade I've had in a long time. In Manchester? Yeah, uh, this little kid, which I'm sure his parents made it. But uh, <laughs> it was like $2 a cup. Dude, that shit was fire. I walked out of there. I got all my stuff. I was like, I'm going to support this little kid down here. How much lemonade? $2. All right. Cool. Damn, to inflation got him too. And I said, cool, that's cool, you know. And I walked out there and I was like, fuck, I wish that was a bigger glass of lemonade. <laughs> I mean, it's shit. But it was sugar up with sugar. No. It was just right? Yeah, it was just right. Maybe they shook it instead of stirring the sugar. Because uh, like, when I drink, I get the Skittles packets. I know some of them got like, a little bit of calories in them. But, you know, it helps me drink water. Anyways, um, I got the shaker, whatever. So. Yeah. And it's so much better to have a shaker 
Because I don't know, it just seems like it mixes it up better. I wonder if they shake those things higher. Like sugar. I don't know, dude. Shaking. I, I, the shaker thing so that the powder breaks up better. Like for protein shakes. I, I'm not talk, but, I'm just talking about a shaker bottle. Just a closed bottle so you can shake it up and stuff. But how stuff. do you shake up your other stuff? What other stuff? When you pour flavored water, flavored drink stuff in water, you shake it, right? Yeah. I'm confused then. Like, it's the same thing. Yeah. Who stirs their fucking bottle of water? I'm just talking about... <laughs> shut the fuck up, motherfucker. I'm talking about with sugar, putting sugar in lemon. I know what you're talking about. Usually, uh, if you want to make real lemon, you make a, a, a sugar syrup. Like, probably heat, like heat up the water and put the sugar in there. That way it melts it all down. And then add the lemon. Yeah, and then... That way, you think you they have, use actual lemons or just lemon juice? They have lemons in front of it, and it tastes like real lemons because I've had some horrible lemonade where they use the pith juice. and all that. Like you, yeah, and you and you, and it's like, did they clean the? Did they not fucking clean the lemon when they drop? You, you know what I'm talking I'm not, about? I don't like like what's it called? Uh, what's the shit? Pulp. Yeah, I'm oh. not a fan of pulp. But I have got used to like orange juice with pulp. Oh, fuck it. So I drink that's the juice. thing we're doing. And I'm getting some orange juice and uh, uh, Myrtle Beach with our breakfast. The one thing I, it's probably not hand squeezed. I don't like. But uh, the one thing I do love is the high pulp fucking. I want uh, like I'm drinking a fucking orange. I want as much pulp in that bitch as I can get in it. So you're gonna chew your drink. Oh man, it's fucking just the best. That fiber is actually good for you too, though. As far as your digestive and with the sugar, it helps with balance the sugar out. But uh, it was really good lemonade, and I haven't had that good of a lemonade since I was at uh, the cornbread festival, and uh, and that was some fucking damn good lemonade in uh, South, South Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. That was fantastic. My mom got, it and I tried it. I was like, holy crap, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, this little kid, his family, they made really good lemonade. I might go back. Well, I was gonna say I might go back next Sunday to get some. But I'll be on the road to Murder Beach. I won't be able to get no... No, no, Saturday. I can go next Saturday. That's my bad. Why did you go into a British accent? I have no idea because we're lifestyles of the rich and famous going to the beach. You look like I'm about to be on a yacht, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, all right, we're going to get into this podcast, finally. Uh, I'm sure you, you were entertained with our stories of lemonade. And... Uh, by Jim the way, uh, the hope, job. we got to say, hope everybody, all the fathers had a good Father's Day. Oh, yeah. Happy Father's Day to you. Uh, Alex. Yeah. Happy Father's Day. Um, who else is a father? I don't know a lot of motherfuckers, but I don't know many, <laughs> many fathers. You know what uh, Oh, happy Father's Day, Greg. Uh, oh, yeah, Greg. And then, uh, son of a bitch. There's a lot of fathers out there. Let's just be honest. I'm just not one. Isaac. Told Isaac. Hey, what was that, Isaac? Uh, Sorry, uh, my bad, Isaac. I know there's you, a lot of fathers. I know you're listening right now. I, I apologize. I suck with names sometimes. I forget my own kids' names. So don't be. <laughs> yeah. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And uh, all the mothers that are raising kids by the show. And technically, all you fathers are motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. You fucking... The mother of your child. You're not a father and you fuck mothers. Oh, yeah. I have. Damn. So I guess technically <laughs> I'm, I'm not too. a father and I'm a motherfucker. So you got the benefit of doing it without having to father yeah, a child. I mean, I've, I've, I've had sex with plenty of mothers. Lots of them. The so majority of the people I've slept with are mothers. Like hey. Yeah. Sure. You're a milf fucker? I mean, I'm yeah. <laughs> non milf fucker, milf fucker. Yeah, you don't have to have a baby for me to fuck you. <laughs> Preferably, you don't have one. Yeah. Anyways, let's well, get, that's just, Johnny wants to be a father. Yeah, Johnny's gonna be fifty and a father. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. You, uh, you got a a daughter that's old enough that you want to get. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you got a nice sweet girl. <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> fucking weird. <laughs> that's sorry. Can I edit that out? No, it's it's all good. Dude, we're only thirteen minutes in. I thought it was further. I, I'm that. talking about uh, of age. I know. I didn't uh, like. I'm not. I did not want no. I, I, I I'm not. You like that of man. age, dude. Like, 
you got like the at least twenties. Twenty one and up. Well, I mean, a little bit older than twenty one. Let's be honest. Okay, twenty five. Yeah, like I'm not. I'm not. We want her to have uh, cheap insurance on her car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and preferably out of college. Um. Drastic. Anyways, let's hmm. let's move on. What are we moving on to? We're moving on to how Godzilla and Kong officially the highest grossing MonsterVerse movie worldwide with five hundred and seventy million dollars worldwide. It brought in all around the world. It brought in that much money. I just thought that was pretty cool. Um, it's very cool. Kong Skull Island topped out at five sixty one. I still have yet to watch this movie. Godzilla holds, or the two thousand fourteen Godzilla five hundred twenty nine million. And I didn't. I fucking wish I'd went and watched this movie. Uh, and I just couldn't make it. Like Which there one? was. This, the new one, the Godzilla vs. Kong or, oh, so or Godzilla Kong movie. I, I didn't get to go see it. And Oh, no. I, I don't know why. I was thinking of the Godzilla movie just for that. Minus one. Oh, minus one. No, no, no. It's not. That's so not. that's the Kong versus. Yeah. So when is it? It's just there? Godzilla Kong, the, the new one. Godzilla Kong's new one. already? Yeah, the new one. That's been out 10 weeks ago. Oh, 10 weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it hit $570 million over 10 it's weeks. No, and... Uh, is it streaming already? No. Nah, it's still in theater. I'm just... It took 10 weeks ago. Gotcha. It's been out 10 mm-hmm. weeks. I mean, yeah. technically, you could probably watch it for $20. Damn, that's crazy. Cause... Because it, what's the one that just came out last week? It's only been uh, out of not even out of theaters for uh, a couple weeks, and it's already on streaming. Oh, uh... The uh, Strangers. Yeah. I hope to make some money because that book streamed and flopped. Um, so, as it stands, uh, Godzilla Kong is the second highest grossing movie worldwide for the year. Behind Dune Part 2 is how much it made. Yeah. $711 million. And it deserves every fucking bit of it because it was a fantastic movie. Well, that'd definitely be a three then, won't there? Well, I, I don't know. I, I wish... I mean, I watch any of those movies. I just love the story. Absolutely love the story. And I know, probably doesn't go by the book, but I don't fucking care. I didn't read the book. Because the audio book is like an audio drama. We talked about that the other week. And I'd like to just read, have the book read to me. Same. And not an audio drama. Hopefully, Isaac, if you're listening to this, you know this book. Um, hopefully, you'll have your uh, audio book done. So I'm ready to listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred um, percent. If anybody out there that has uh, read his book of Gordon's Place or listened to it, and you know somebody that makes movies and they need to make that one. That'd be a great movie, wouldn't it? Yes. Did you listen to the audio book? Yes. Gordon's Place. And uh, Isaac's new book, just so we would give a shout out here real quick, um, since we're talking about him. Tab's Terrible Third Eye. What was the one before that? Was it Hell? Like I said, sorry, Isaac. Uh, It's Hell something, I think. Hell Spring or something like that? Hell Springs. I don't know, man. I don't know why you're asking me. Uh, But, yeah, let's give Isaac a shout-out real quick. Oh, Isaac Thorne, he is Um, the homie. uh, Yeah, Tab's Terrible Third Eye. He's a really great guy. Um, not not Tab, Isaac is. I don't know about Tab. I have nine year old Tab is an artist harboring fears and anxieties that he soothes by drawing. After an encounter with an otherworldly creature, an angry bump afflicts his te- left temple. The wound burns and itches, but will not heal. Worse, it summons ghosts. Hell yeah. spring. Soon, Tab's art pro- portends real life disasters like his father's death. Tab becomes convinced his bump. His third eye causes bad things. Will Tab be able to control this power before it takes another life? Can he free himself from the ghost who is determined to use that power to un- untold ends? The answer lies in the secrets revealed by Tab's terrible third eye. Available January 25th, wherever books are sold. So be on the lookout, guys. Um, I was this great guy. He writes good books. So I'll throw it in there, too. That's another good book. Uh, great book of his. Road Kills. You got that? I got it. Uh, 
the Gordon place as well, and I'll be getting Hell Springs also. Yep. So if my wife ain't already got it, I can't remember. Anyways, the, uh, shout out to Isaac, you the man, you the man, dog. So uh, it it was announced that uh, George A. Romero's daughter Tina Romero is making a zombie movie. He goes back into this. It's called Queens of the Dead. And this about drag queens. I don't know. Um, Maybe it'll have a. Tina Romero says to Fangoria, "My dad's zombies were always reflecting what was going on in the world." I almost feel a responsibility to take the torch and keep the Romero zombie alive. Upholding, respecting, paying homage to it. But also introducing myself in my own voice as a filmmaker. In my own perspective, which is different from his. So this screenplay takes place over one night at the beginning of the Dead Rising find ourselves at a big warehouse party in Bushwick. We've got a party promoter, it's not Bushwick Bill, is it? <laughs> For whom everything's going wrong, and her lead act has dropped out, so she needs to call upon a friend, a retired drag queen, to resurrect his drag, no. to come and save the night. It turns out no. to be a night of many resurrections. And our motley crew of characters find themselves holed up in a Bushwick nightclub. Having to decide, do we get out of here, or do we board the place up? And they've got to survive the night. It's about a group of non-fighters finding their survival skills deep within. Ah. Uh, I feel like it, what, you gotta say it in front of this, please. And this is the lifestyles of the ancient famous. And this is the lifestyles of the zombies and the dead. Great. That's great. Um, so it's a fun ride that's packed with some good jump scares and some yummy gore and some pretty amusing characters. Hey, I'm down for that, actually. Uh, sounds actually really good. Because, like I said, you get a bunch, a group of people that are pussies, right? They have no survival skills. Me and Jim Jam. That's survival, man. I just don't mean to, I can't. I mean, come on, dude. We're, 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 that's what I'm saying. We have zero survival Shoot ability. Me, fuck. We're zero survivability, though. Shoot a zombie up. Yeah, zombies. Uh, uh, I mean, what we need, though, what you need, though, is one of them uh, straws where you can drink out of toilets. So at least you'd have yeah. fresh water. Filter straw or something? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we get that bag, too, where you get the muddy water. And yeah. You, yeah. Put the little packet in and shake it all about. Yeah, I've seen that. The guy, he hangs on the back of his truck. Yep. And then he looks underneath the microscope to show you all the dead stuff. Yeah, I've seen that video. Uh, oh, cool. This sounds like a good movie. Uh, Queen of the Dead. Uh, scroll down a little bit. See if there's like... Uh, aiming for a release date in 2025. So, 2026. So, I think it's something <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> um, filming... Uh, they're filming this month. Start filming this month. So, Should, I might reach out to her, see if we can get her, uh, get, yeah. get some word from her about it. Yeah. Uh, good, yeah. We've uh, talked to her brother before. He's yeah, he's a really nice guy. Yeah. Shot a film in uh, Kentucky. So here we go. Yeah, I bet it's hot as fuck up there that summer. Tire Fire 3. Features insanely horrific stomach turning mind blowing effects from Christian Tinsley's team because Damien handed it over to them. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's gonna be fucking even more gory. So, I mean, this is what people want. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of super gore. Uh, Terrifier 2 was fine though, it, it had some. Disturbing scenes. That bedroom scene, boy. It was yeah, good to watch. Yeah, that's hard. Even though you know it's fake, it's still. Oh. Yeah, it's good. I mean, they they did good special effects. Uh, to me, the best scene was when he had the woman's head and he was handing out candy to trigger trigger. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, I thought it was real funny. Uh, so yeah, did not buy that movie. Yeah, you got the special edition. I got the steel book. Yeah, the special edition ain't nothing. <laughs> got ripped off. There, I don't want to show you. Well, this is a steelbook for Terrifier 2. 
Yeah. Guess what? Look what's inside. It's a it's a blue ray. It's just a blue ray. No booklet or nothing. Yeah. I'm just gonna steal case. <laughs> yeah, so as we know, Chris Jericho is gonna have a small role. Yeah, we got uh, the end of the two one. But speaking of Damien Leone, uh he is going to be portraying... No, no, David Howard Thornton. Oh, no. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> David Howard Thornton. I was... These... These nuts. Oh, sorry. <laughs> David Howard Thornton will be Steamboat Willie. And uh, the new... Uh, I guess he's already filmed it because I messaged him and he responded and said thanks because I told him congratulations and I was hoping to get an interview with him, but uh, he yeah, said so, it's a fun movie, so... So in Screamboat, he is portraying the the villain again. So I mean, good for him, man. He's he's getting his roles in the as, as the as a character actor. In, in you got to watch in, this one, the main one. Oh you yeah, I never got to watch it. Yeah, I never got to watch it. That was a great movie. I got to interview the the main uh, main hero in that. What what was what was Cindy Lou? Oh yeah, she was a stunt double for uh, Ronda Rousey. Oh, that's cool. She looks a lot like me, so it makes sense. Oh yeah, so good for uh, David. Uh, I guess Jesse Cove of uh, Cobra Kai is in that. No clue who that is. And then someone from Teen Wolf. Amy uh, Schumacher, the mean one. Uh, so know. yeah, man, this is going to be awesome. Uh, does it have on January first? Earliest version of the Mickey Mouse scene in that. No, uh, scroll down. Uh, twenty twenty-five. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, yeah. There's there, already a movie out that's uh, Mickey Mouse versus Winnie the Pooh, wasn't it? I think something. Something like that. All right. Um, well, speaking of Winnie the Pooh, uh, Blood and Honey 2 reaches VOD later this month. Yeah, they they had the uh, the special edition Blu-ray release uh, will be next month. Uh, so Umbrella it'll be Entertainment. While we're, while we're in... Uh, Myrtle Beach, uh, it'll be on VOD. Yeah, twenty sixth of June. The Umbrella Entertainment, you could get like a the Blu Ray and like some trading cards or something, you know. And, and they got action, little action figures too. Probably, yeah. Uh, I was hoping both of the movies would come out together, like a dual disc. I think the special one might have both Something of them. That Wolf uh, Cop did. Yeah, uh, the, Maybe. one of them might have both of them. I can't remember. I hope so. Cause... But it was like sixty bucks, and I was like, eh, eh. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, so what was the next one? Is I think the, the cool, Bambi movie. Yeah, I think what'd be cool on the uh, Blood and Honey Part Two is the special features. I think it'd be oh, really gosh. cool, like the behind the scenes stuff. We had the first one, but I might turn around and get the. If it's a, a dual it, disc, yeah. If it's a dual disc, I'd probably buy it and be more likely to buy it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'd want both of them. But I also like it if it was um, available on like Voodoo or I think it's called Fango. What's the Fang Fang? Fangoria? No, um, Fandango. Oh. It's Voodoo's changing over to Fandango. But movies anywhere or something where I can, you know, what I'm saying, stream it a little easier. Uh, Cause it just makes it easier. You've heard our review on this. Uh, we was with John. I loved it. It's this a movie, fantastic movie. Like I said, I loved how they uh, made you know where their limitations for the first one. They flipped it in the the second one and made it look like a fan film. Yeah. If so, you haven't seen Blood and Honey Part Two, you know you really you don't have to watch the first one uh, to get to the second one. In my opinion, the they, first they one go over has it just well. helped them find the second one. Yeah, and the second one goes over the first one pretty well. And I, I want to say this, that this right here can goes to show you that even if you ain't got a lot of money, well, even with, as you've seen the Terrifier, uh, you make one movie in the second one, you can have a lot more money. Well, but I think they put, they put yeah, $100,000 in the first one. So, But yeah, but yeah, you don't have to have a multi-million dollar budget. No, because your first one could make you enough money to get you a million dollar budget <laughs> for the next one. It's, it's a good movie. Let's move on. All right, so... Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, um, Cliff Dorfman, I don't know who he is. Uh, he was once attached as a screenwriter to The Crow. Um, he's seen the new adaptation, and he's not a fan. He just said it's unwatchable. Uh, 
Uh, if I do want to happen to be see a screening of the Crow, the Crow, which Lionsgate is releasing in August, one might say it's horrible, it's unwatchable, don't waste your money, or can't believe it's so much worse than the original it is, and don't. Uh, sounds like he's fucking butt hurt. <laughs> I mean, let's like. You was working on it as a screenwriter, and then you got kicked off of it, and then now you come out, you got to see it, and you just dog it out. Does that sound like somebody yeah, that's kind of butt hurt? Now he um, might not be. He might be telling the truth. I don't know. So he's just being salty. Yeah, and as I always say, make go and watch it yourself. Make your own. Form your own opinion. This could be a fucking phenomenal movie, and this one guy's and opinion I, might fuck it up. And I'm thinking though, a lot of people are going to hate on it. Just because of their love for the other movie and Brandon Lee, yeah, and that's it. Let it stand as what it is, you know. And maybe it might be shit, dude. It might not be good. I mean, but give it a chance. I'm gonna let you know, and I'm gonna go watch it. And if it's not fucking good, I'm gonna say it's not good. It might do. A... I mean, it might be horrible. I don't know. It could be fantastic. Could come but I'm gonna get lost in the character because I'm not a a truest or a, a you know a purist. I'm not a purist, so. I don't know. Werewolves uh, going to be with Frank Brillo. Steve C. Miller horror film gets a December theatrical release. Uh, so two years have gone by since we heard it from the director. Um, he was the one that did Silent Out. Good movie. Oh, yeah. Um, so. Is that the one? Silent Out. Never mind. Go ahead. What is it? I couldn't remember which Silent Night. Which Silent one. Night, it's the one that with dude in it, and it was Christmas time, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Because did you go to theater? Did we both go to? Was theater? that Silent Night? Silent Night was the one that he got. Uh, he couldn't talk. Oh couldn't. wait, was that that one? Yeah, Violent Night. Is Violent, Violent Night is what I'm thinking of. No, I don't. Silent, was, Silent yeah, Night. Yeah, I went and watched Silent Night. Didn't we go together? I think so, but that's the one where the is an action movie more. Yeah, he can't talk. His son got killed. Hey, did I go watch that? I don't remember. I can't remember. I think me and my son went and saw it. I can't remember that. Yeah, y'all went and watched it. Did I go watch it? Seems really familiar. But yeah, the dude got... Uh, something happened with him and his son. But yeah. yes. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Frank Grillo, uh, The Purge, the Captain America franchise. Uh, Werewolf shows us that a Superman event triggered a latent gene in every human on the planet. Turning anyone who entered the moonlight into a werewolf. Oh, wow. For that one night, chaos ensued and close to a billion people died. Damn. Hour later, the supermoon's fucking back, dude. Okay. Uh, I'm excited. I mean, and plus, just to have a good horror movie, like the, the body horror movie of, uh, what's her name? Demi Moore. That movie's coming out around Christmas, so there's going to be some horror movies. Hopefully they get actually shown in the theaters around uh, the holidays, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'll have to go watch a good werewolf movie around fucking Christmas time. That'd be awesome. Hell yeah. Well, I'm down. Well, y'all down? Let us know. Eli Ross, Thanksgiving. Uh, speaking of Christmas, we are talking about the, the one holiday before that gets skipped over for no decorations, hardly. Um, Thanksgiving is getting the 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 game the board game treatment from Stop the Killer games. Uh, they're the one games that do all the other like they did uh, My Bloody Valentine. I think they had a Texas Chainsaw. Mm -hmm. They might have had a Halloween one. Yeah, um, I think so. Like forty bucks. Uh, so this will be coming out. Uh, board game coming in November. We'll switch That's over. Pretty friggin' cool. Three limited edition stickers. That fucking head sticker is really dope. Yeah, that's and they got a, a foil one, you know what I'm saying? All right here. Yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. I mean, them are dope, man. Fright rags. Yeah. Designed by Eli Roth and John Cohn. Heck yeah. Um, I, think I don't that... know how it'll work, but you can go check out uh, Stop the Killer Games. Uh, more likely, yes, I think that's where the, where the website. Uh, the link is here. Oh, well. Go back. Uh, check here. Oh. oh shit! I don't know. That's 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 a review. Never mind. Fuck. There it is. 
Yeah. You clicked it right. Stop the killer. Yeah. Stop the killer dot com. So forty nine ninety five. Oh, 50 bucks. Uh, yeah. So you can go ahead and pre order that. Um, we'll take a gander right here at it. I mean, that's pretty cool graphics. Uh, I got some videos on There's it. There's a little closer of the foil. foil card. I think the fucking head one's pretty dope. It's foil, too. It's yeah, got a foil that's, edge on it. That's pretty dope. And then that there will be no leftovers. Thanksgiving's a sticker. Yeah. That, that big thing down there, that's a sticker. That's good. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool on a laptop or. Somewhere, you know. So Blumhouse Games announces three or six video games. So um which ones are those? Uh Sleep Awake. Oh, it was up the top. Uh Fear the Spotlight, Sleep Awake, Crystal Theaters of Idol, Grave Season, The Simulation, and Project C. Or is that the games or is that like who make them? I don't know. Oh, these are the ones I'm making. Oh. Developer eyes out at the game design. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Blumhouse moving into video games. I mean, like, they're going to be like AAA games or they just going to be like phone games. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. Because it don't say if it, what console is not going to be. Does it? Uh, uh, see it. You keep scrolling it, and it's hard to read. Uh, so, like, developer's eyes out is developing the um, Sleep Awake, a first person psych- psychedelic horror game that's set in the distant future and follows Katya as she deals with dangerous otherworldly forces. Rizal Theater of Idol, a first person horror adventure set in a terrifying version of Spain. Where statues of saints spring to life. Uh, Grave Season is a pixelated farming town simulation game set in Ashridge, where one of the residents is a supernatural serial killer. Um, the simulation is a retired game designer whose only evidence for a crime is never before seen horror game. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Not really. Yeah. So here's a story for Blade is delayed. Uh, fucking why? It's been delayed a lot, right? Uh, so uh, Ali, the the I can't. Mahershala Ali, the Blade, the guy who's gonna play Blade, attorney uh, said that it's pretty much the craziest thing he's ever experienced, professional experience. Um. Uh, I still haven't shot it, so... It's supposed to be the most cursed production in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So they signed a deal in 2019, and they still haven't done shit with it, so... That's pretty fucking wild, man. Yeah, for real. And that's Blade for you. Probably won't ever get made. That sucks. Somebody will just move on. So this is, um... An announcement on our website, Tennessee Horror News. Uh, the Covenant is coming to Ultra HD. Um, we'll do the full screen. You can see, this has got a. It's a pretty cool fucking cover. What's it? Oh, Adrian Barrow. Bar- 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 yeah. Bar- She's Bar- in Bar- it. <clears throat> but uh, there's got the, Coolio. Isn't Coolio passed away? Yeah. Let's see right there. Oh, no. I don't, right there. It's I like, see his name, but... Right there. Oh, no. That's exhaustion. But, uh, yeah, um, you can see the artwork if you're watching the video. It's pretty cool. Uh, I, I think it's just uh, a regular cover, not steel book. Isn't Coolio dead? Yeah, he passed away. He did Bonnaroo and then passed away. Yeah, that sucks. But, uh, yeah. So, the that, Covenant... So, it's getting a new... Yeah, just new release. It's been out, you know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, what is that? October 8th uh, of this year. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Getting a Blu-ray release. It's pretty fucking bad at But yeah, so go to Tennessee Horror News and uh, check out all the stuff we got going on there. Um, and I guess it's time. <laughs> Move in 
two behind the base window. I almost forgot what I was going to say. All righty. So uh, we got our first crop circle of 2024 in the UK. Is it, did you watch this video? No, I have not watched this video. So uh, I guess you're going to watch uh, it with us. 6 12 for 2024. We'll turn the audio off, and there it is, yo. First crop circle of the year. Yeah, I want to make one. It's like a windmill, I guess, is what they call it, I think. Wilton Windmill. That looks pretty damn good, though. Yeah, whoever designed it did a good job. The aliens did it. Oh, my bad. Sorry. I'll spoil it. Uh, oh, oh, there's the drone shot. I mean, the poor people's field. Fucked up their crop. Yeah. So, trying to look, let's see if we can see. How is it? How's what? I was just looking to see how it was done. So that's just so they can walk through to get to the other side. Or is that a part? No, that's part of the shape. That's right. But yeah, that's a... Uh, no, I think that's just uh design. I don't think it's a design. I think that's just part of the field. What the? Oh, the, the lines. Yeah. Oh, See, yeah. like they, they got lines on the other side too, where it's just where they bring their vehicles, like tractors. See how they got? Oh, gotcha. I see it. Like where they water or whatever. Like oh, it's like big tall things. Yeah, yeah. Well, they yeah. can spray the fields, and they just drive down that. Maybe I don't know. I think mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah. What do you think it means? Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot. Dot, dot. Well, anybody out there can decipher what Johnny just said. Yeah. Uh, um, leave us a voicemail at 931-325-9755. Yeah, let us know what I said. Uh, since we're doing a video, i got another video right here. What the fuck is that? From uh, Reddit. We'll do a full screen real quick. and uh, is this, Yeah, we got full screen. Yeah, check this out. So let's get some context before, or do we want to watch it first and then get some uh, let, let me, What the fuck is it? Let, right. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. All right, let's start from the beginning, and here we go. What do y'all think this is? Somebody having sex with the bear? I don't know. It looks like multiple black creatures. Um, someone's laying on the ground. Some A woman laying on the ground, maybe? I thought it was an animal. And is it pooping on it? It's gonna poop on him. It looks like oh. the, the shirt is pulled up and their hand just went up. Oh, they're pushing them over. Is it is that a person? I don't know what the hell is going on here, dog. What do you think? I don't know. It looks like this part, this right here, they're changing, or that looks like a is that a person? Well, that's a person. It's supposed to be they're changing. Their hands look weird. What is that? I mean, the weird thing is, it's like dudes got them spotlighted and they're not doing that. So, yeah. So, what, what are they saying on the old Reddit station? Uh, Here's the comments. And I am from. Alleged unedited clip of Mysterious. In Mexico, okay. Uh, I am from Mexico, and it it is a montage for YouTube content from the channel called Hulk Productions Official. Oh, so it's just a movie. Oh, this is fake. I mean, yeah, it looks. It's fake. even in HD on this channel, and quite hilarious. Oh shit! Let's see that. Never gonna give you up. Never. Oh, sorry. Is this it? Yeah. Oh, no, no. A ver, está bien. Ah, it's all right. Right here? Yeah, see what... Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. All so, right. uh, this is what we're... Hold on, we'll show full screen. So this is not just somebody dressed up in an outfit. All right. Well, 
Kind of killed that. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously it was fake. Damn, time to something great. Uh, Jim Jam, come on. You, well, you want to speak about great? Uh, about making America great again? Uh, through aliens? Apparently Donald Trump, I didn't know this, like, I don't keep up with what Donald Trump's doing. Um, besides whatever I hear on the radio, because I don't watch, I try not to watch political stuff, but I do listen to some po- political stuff. And it's both conservative and liberal. Uh, I'm a moderate. I don't, uh, but, uh, so Trump went on Impulsive, the, uh, Logan Paul fucking podcast, and he asked about UFOs, and he got the most Donald Trump answer. Uh, <laughs> Trump began by noting the, uh, that it's a question that he gets asked a lot. Uh, he he went on to recall meeting with pilots whom he describes as perfect people who are not crazy or conspiracy. I watched this interview, and it, or I listened to it on the way to Nashville yesterday. I look, I look at these guys, Trump observed, and they really mean it. And, and even Trump says I, he's not a believer. Uh, I can't say I am, uh, but I have met with people that are serious people that say there's some really strange things that they see flying around out there. Uh, Noted Roswell and said, I've had actually meetings on it and they will tell you things are going on. Uh, After Logan asked him, don't you have access? And he said he's had meetings and things are going on. Uh, Yeah, that's how I am with people with ghosts and stuff. It's like, something's happening. You know what I'm saying? It can't be explained. Something's going on. Uh, Trump's not an alien believer, but he believes people are seeing stuff, so it's probably the only talk about Donald Trump will have. Stay on UFO stuff. Yep. So a girl in New York New State, New York State, not city, reports seeing two women being taken by cube-shaped UFOs. Um, a young girl in New York State claims that she spotted two women seemingly being abducted by a UFO. A strange incident reportedly occurred on the evening of May 28th as a 10-year-old witness was walking with her dog on a road in the community of Lake George recounting these sightings to the National UFO Reporting Center. A girl indicated that... How would a 10-year-old know about the National UFO? Anyways, the girl indicated that she initially Google. observed two women apart, 50 feet apart ahead of her on the same street to the youngster's spot she recalled two white cubes appear and took one person up and then the other person up they both floated up into the sky and disappeared and these cartels are getting fucking dangerous uh according to the witness her dog also watched the weird scene unfold though unfortunately the canine cannot corroborate her account ha 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 that's funny interestingly the girl's report also amused that the perceived women I have been beings, though she did not explain what led her to consider such a fantastic scenario. That said, in what some would suggest makes the proverbial extraterrestrial hypothesis for the event plausible, a local radio station looking into the story found no missing person cases nor any police activity that would correlate with the strange sighting. Cool. Uh, another possibility with UFO enthusiasts might posit if the girl's account is genuine and the women were not otherworldly is they could have been returned by the craft and so and as so often happens with alien abduction cases and never realized they were ever taken so yeah uh, but watch out there in New York State and you might get abducted by white cubes <laughs> so apparently uh there was a mysterious creature uh, appeared during Indian Prime Minister's inauguration ceremony. Uh, I haven't watched this video either. Uh, viewers watching the Indian uh, were left scratching their heads with a, when a mysterious creature suddenly strolled through the back of the event. The weird moment occurred Monday as Narendra Modi officially began his third term of taking the oath ceremony at Rashtrapati the Haven? Yeah, sounds good. Rashtrapati Bahavan Bahavan? I don't know. Lavish estate complete with residents akin to the country's White House. Uh, so let's play this video 
and see if we can find the imposter. Oh, what the fuck? Right here. Was that a dog? This is a fucking dog. Give me a break, man. It's got a cat, a big ass cat or a dog back there. Why y'all got leopards walking around? Alright. We do bumped it. What the fuck? It's just a huge cat. When they got pet leopards? I guess so. Jesus Christ. Probably one of them like uh Scroll down a little bit. What what are they saying down this? Uh one of those uh, cat is it? The Savannah cats? An array of what yeah. On its sizable ground. Some of them theorize that the animal could have been a leopard. Yeah, that motherfucker was huge. It looked like a leopard. Yeah. But big, big old cat. I will say this. I would still try to pet it. Because it would be adorable. And I would get like a little string thing and see if it would play with my, you know. Yeah, so we're going to the beach, right? This is scurred. Well, in Maine, a sinkhole warning at Pom Pom. The show is Pom Pom. Pom Pom Beach State Park. I don't know. I don't know if it was a show or not. shows them. These are terrifying. You know, as a kid. As a kid, we were always told we had to worry about quicksand. And I've never ran into quicksand. You son of a bitches. Has a whole video and no sinkhole. And... So a woman struggling along a beach in Maine found herself in a strange situation straight out of a classic cartoon as she suddenly been caught in quicksand. The weird incident occurred earlier this month as Jamie and Patrick Accord were on uh, their way home on the afternoon trip to Popham Beach State Park while walking on the beach towards the parking lot. Couple were taken aback when Jamie suddenly sunk around two and a half feet. Wow. Yeah. Fell up fell in up to my hips, she recalled in Facebook posts, noting that her husband said one minute I was there and next I was not. Stuck in the wet slurry of sand, Jamie said she could not regain her footing and ultimately needed to be rescued from the predicament by her husband, who pulled me out like you'd pick up a toddler off the floor. Fortunately, she only suffered a few scratches from rocks and sticks in the slushy sand. I honestly observed that. Had I been a small child, I would have disappeared into the hole. Yeah. The moment was made rather mystifying when upon her escape, she looked back at the spot and it had disappeared. Why didn't she step back in it? Jamie later found out from the park rangers that the odd event was because of flooding in the area. They promptly put up warning signs around the beach. Like, do you imagine just walking? Yeah. Just like, whoop. That would be scary. Yeah. And then you have a stick button up against you and you don't know what the fuck it is. Freaking but out. But the good thing is, though, is you had a husband that was able to lift you out of it. Yeah. So it's good you wasn't overweight, lady. Anyways, mm. uh. <laughs> Dude, I think I'm smelling salt for like burnt my sinuses. Oh, I can't yeah. smell right now. Go to the reportedly right. and that. Um, yeah, I can smell. Jim James got addicted to smelling salts. We gotta give him uh, uh what's it called? I'm not doing anything new. What you talking about? We gotta give him. Uh, Are we watching this? Intervention, I guess. Uh, so there's an orb on a beach. Orb with a mouth. Yeah, since you're. What the fuck is that? Right there. That's a car. It's a goddamn car on the road back there. Come on, these people. Give me a fucking break, dude. Come on. Come on! Right, that's just a boat on the water in the back. Where the sun, you know, it was. Alright, that's debunked. Uh, we'll... Jesus Christ, bro. Right, we're not even on this Oh show. my god, y'all gotta watch that. Ah. Oh. So a brazen cellular killer turns Ganyan Village into ghost town. Scroll down. Uh, so, in an unsettling story in Ghana, a village has turned into a veritable ghost town as residents are afraid to leave their homes due to a brazen sewer killer who has struck four times over the past six months. Um, the chilling case is currently unfolding in the community of Bowl, where the murderous miscreant began their reign of terror late last year by claiming their first victim and leaving the un fortunate individual body in a public spot where it was easily discovered when a pair of similar deaths occurred shortly thereafter. Soon suspected that there was a serial killer out there. 
in what appeared to be some kind of creepy calling card on the part of the killer, placed a red towel over their latest victim, which only exasperated the terror of the, and gripped the community. Giving trouble to people in the village is that the proverbial bold butcher managed to strike while there was a sizable police presence brought about by the murders. Probably because it's a police officer. As a result, residents have understandably opted to remain inside their homes at night to protect themselves. Nobody wants to be the next victim. That is why the whole town after 8 p.m. movement ceases. Yeah, probably a police officer approaches people like, hey, you okay? Stab, stab, stab. Red towel, dead. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Hmm. Well, I guess that's everything we got for this week, y'all. Let us um, know if you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can message us, leave a voicemail at 931 325 9755, or you could email us at uh, tnhorror.com, tnhorror at gmail.com. My bad. And if you had any uh, ideas or topics you'd like to hear us talk about, let us know. Yeah, We're always well, open for suggestions. And if you got any suggestions for... Uh, and if you suggested something and we forgot, let us know. Yeah, uh, and if you got any suggestions on what we should do in South Carolina, let us know. <laughs> let us know. But follow us on TikTok, the Big Ball Buddies. Uh, we are back on our main page. Uh, we got un, unbanned, I guess, shadow banned or something. Maybe. Um, uh, then we have Tennessee Horror News on Instagram. And uh, yeah, the Big Wild Buddies on Instagram. Yeah, go follow us, guys. Hell yeah, we're almost at 4,000 followers on TikTok. So if we get 10,000, we can uh, get monetized and we get paid for views. So, hmm. create some fake accounts, follow. Yeah, create how many? Create 6,000. 6, 6,000, 20 more. Yeah, come on. 20, y'all. Go you make can it. do it. You, you can do it. it. <laughs> all right, y'all. I guess that's all we got. We out. Peace. Thank you for listening to Jim Jam and John in the Horror Basement and Beyond. Please follow, like, share, and rate us wherever you listen to us.